Are you exchanging your pink cylinders, paying $15 or more per refill? Stop, you can refill these on your own safely for just a dollar or two, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in the next few minutes. You will turn into a refill pro by the end of this video, and you'll be enjoying nearly free sparkling water for life, so let's do it. First off, you will need a few pieces of equipment. I'll put Amazon links to all these in the video description below. Now, the first piece of recommended equipment is a food scale. A food scale allows us to precisely measure the weight of our canisters during the filling process. Ideally, one that can show you grams. All right, next is a CO2 monitor. I'll cover this more in the safety section, but this is great for a peace of mind when you're storing or moving around larger CO2 tanks, just in case there was a leak you couldn't detect. This is gonna show you pretty quickly that there's a problem. Last recommended item is a keg wrench. Now this one was $10. It fits a CGA 320 valve like we have in the US. You can do it with just a standard wrench, but this is nice. So now for our two pieces of required equipment and I'll show you different options for each. First, you're gonna need a larger CO2 tank. Now you could get a five pound tank like this, but most five pound tanks don't have a siphon tube. And that's why I have it upside down right now. A siphon tube will allow you to take the liquid CO2 from the bottom of the tank and bring it up to the top of the valve. Liquid CO2 is gonna to sink to the bottom, which is why we have to invert our five pound tanks. It's a hassle and honestly, not the safest way to refill. When you really wanna do refills as cheaply and safely and easily as possible, you're gonna to wanna to get a 20 pound tank like this that has a siphon tube. This, you can keep the tank on the ground, helps with the safety process, and it also just gives you a lot of uh, CO2 to work with. You'll get a much better value from a larger tank like this. So to get your larger tank filled, Google beverage CO2 near me. To find a local CO2 provider, you can bring in your own tank to many and they'll fill from anywhere from $15 to $40 for a 20 pound tank. I go to my local homebrew store here in Portland and it's great, 10 minutes, I bring in my tank, walk out with it full. Lastly, you will need a refill adapter for the SodaStream Quick Connect system. Newer Quick Connect bottles are more challenging to refill than the older standard screw-in bottles. So there's only a few type of adapters. I've bought and tried them all. Before we start the refill process, a quick but crucial note on safety. Now, CO2 is pretty safe when handled correctly, but it's still a gas under high pressure and it is dangerous in high concentrations. Always refill your cylinders in a well-ventilated area open some windows, make sure you have easy access to fresh air, know the quickest route if you needed to get outside, how you could do that. And if you ever start to develop a headache, shortness of breath or dizziness, move to fresh air immediately. And if you have symptoms that are severe, get medical help. Now be careful when you're moving these larger tanks around. The biggest risk is really breaking the neck here and the tank would quickly exhaust and fly around the room and make sure to secure it when it is at rest so you don't have an animal or a small child running into it. Let's move on to choosing the right refill adapter for the Quick Connect system. There are three different refill adapters and I'm gonna go through all of them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the SodaStream Quick Connect bottles are trickier to refill than our older standard screw-in models. That's why it's really important to choose the right adapter. And here are the three available today. This is the cheapest one you'll find available and the most prevalent, and I could not recommend it less. I tried it for weeks on different cylinders at different temperatures, and I was only able to get like a good refill one time. It was very, very frustrating. It has to hang off the tank. Your refill tank barely misses the edge of the donor tank, and then it just has to sit there. You have to hold it, and then there's not an easy way to measure how much CO2 you're actually getting into your cylinder because you can't have a scale that just floats. Secondly, it doesn't depress the top button of the Quick Connect tank. So if you look at the Quick Connect top, these newer tanks have actually three access areas. There's two on the side, and then they still have the button on the top. So this one takes care of the side, but it doesn't take care of, of depressing the top as well. So it's just gonna lead to frustration. Now the next two adapters are nearly identical, and I've had good success with both the designs. There is one I like a little bit more, but either one of these would do. Next up, is this clamp on one. And you'll notice one nice thing about this is you get a tube, right? So you can connect to your tank and then you can have enough tubing with this hose to be able to have your CO2 cylinder that you're filling actually sit on a scale. The one issue I have with this is when you clamp on top of the device and you screw the knob here at the top to depress the top button, it starts to run into the sides here and it kind of grates a little bit, makes it a little difficult to, to get off because you've got to unscrew it. So. Very similar design to the third one that we'll get to. I think this one here feels the most secure and the top knob, it doesn't rub anything. 
because it's smaller and it just stays in place really well. I've had nothing but great refills with this adapter, even though it's a little spendier, well, it's quite a bit spendier than the small one, but the extra cost and having the tube is completely worth it to be able to consistently refill easily and safely. Done a lot of refills with this one. I really like it. The top knob here makes it easy. It doesn't have a pressure gauge on it, a PSI sensor. I never look at the PSI sensor. You wanna to listen to your tank. You wanna watch how many grams are going in. The PSI is pretty relevant. It's gonna to get to 700 or 800 pretty quickly and it's just gonna stay there. So I don't find it that useful at all. This is definitely my pick for the refill adapter that I would recommend and I'll put a link to this on Amazon below. So now that we've found our best adapter, let's go through step-by-step -step the refill process. First, we wanna set up our scale and get our empty cylinder from the freezer gotten our cylinder from the freezer. It's very cold. I'm putting it into an ice bath to keep it as cold as possible during the refill process. And the reason we want to keep the cylinder as cold as possible is because CO2 is always going to want to go from high pressure to low pressure. It's, it's all excited. It's confined in this space. It wants to go to a place where it's got more room to breathe, right? So we're going from a pressurized environment here to an empty cylinder. So the first part's gonna go really easy, but as pressure starts to build, one, the temperature is gonna start to rise. All those little molecules moving around are gonna raise the temperature of our cylinder. So we wanna keep it as cold as possible. That's why we started as cold as possible to make it as easy as possible for the CO2 to go from our donor tank to the cylinder. We're gonna attach our CGA320 valve to our adapter. We're just gonna hand tighten it first. So we're just gonna tighten this as much as we can, just hand tightening it. And then you will need to tighten it more to make sure it doesn't leak. Hand tighten it. And then if you have an adjustable uh, wrench or I've got this handy keg wrench, just give it a little more of a tighten. You know, nothing crazy, but that will ensure that we don't get any leaks from our donor tank. So we've got our adapter here. We're gonna take the bottom part of the adapter, place that over the cylinder with the, the thread part facing down. We'll attach the adapter and make sure and line up the safety valve with the notch in the adapter here. And then we can go ahead and tighten this to secure the adapter on to the cylinder. So we've got a good seal there. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and open this all the way. So the cylinder's closed. There's nothing in here, so nothing's gonna escape. But if we had this all the way tightened down, and we had say the exhaust valve released, then gas, if there was any gas in the cylinder would start to escape there. So we wanna make sure, make sure our exhaust valve is closed. Go ahead and tighten the knob down. I'm gonna set CO2 into the ice bath and I'm gonna reset my scale to zero. So now we're at zero grams. We wanna to try to get around 400 grams from our donor tank into our cylinder for refill. Anything around that's great. If we get to 300, sometimes it's all you get with these quick connect ones, they can be challenging. So I'll take 300 if we can get that, 400 would be ideal. This is closed, exhaust valve is closed, and now the knob is closed as well. So we're ready to flow CO2 from our donor tank into the cylinder, and we're gonna start very, very slowly. That is key. We don't wanna to flow too fast, that'll heat up the bottle fast, faster than we want, and it will cool this down, and that's the opposite of what we want. We want this tank to be as, like at a warmer state, and this one to stay as cool as possible, because again, CO2 is always gonna wanna go to a lower pressure environment. Let's go ahead and start to open up the tank here. And you wanna listen to it very slowly. Okay, so we can see the We can definitely hear it. And now we're up to 50 grams already. I'm just kind of holding this in place. I don't want it to fall over. 85 grams, 89, 91. This is probably a little faster rate than I would like, but now we're at a good pace here. We're at 125. We want this to take a minute to two minutes to do the fill. And if you hear any screeching or wishing, stop the process and reset. You should just hear a gentle flow. Nothing too crazy. And then key is to you know watch your scale. We're at 183 grams now, so we're already about halfway done. 
the fill will start to slow down as the pressure increases in your cylinder. So you may need to open up the tank a little bit more, kind of halfway through the process or so. So I'm gonna open it up a little more because we've started to slow down a little bit. Okay, that sounds good. We're up to 245. You can feel the temperature is a little colder on your donor tank, and that's due to um, all the gas leaving quickly, lowers the temperature in this tank, and it's raising the temperature in the, the new tank. Okay, we're up to 300 grams. And we're probably a little over a minute now. I'm gonna open up a little bit more. Okay, so we're fully open on the donor tank now. We're at 341, 342. It's definitely starting to slow down now. I would guess we'll get maybe 10 or 20 more grams in, but this has been a very successful fill. Yeah, so we're fully open on the donor tank and we're at 350, 351 grams into the cylinder. But at this point, we've pretty much equalized. So we really slowed down. We're not getting much new CO2 from the donor tank into the cylinder tank. So I'll watch it a little bit longer, but at this point we're getting, we're, we're starting to equalize pressure. So there's nothing really more we can do at this point. We could try to get the cylinder tank lower, at lower temperature, but there's no easy way to do that now. Getting over 350 in these, I feel like is a win and still a remarkably cheap option to refill your, your canisters on your own. Okay, so we're up to 364 grams in, uh, 365. I'm gonna say at this point, this is good for me. We can't really increase the, the rate of flow from our donor tank anymore. So to finish the process of filling, once you're satisfied with how much uh, CO2 we've gotten in, we're still getting a few more grams in here. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna stop the flow from the main tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And our scale just went off, so perfect timing. So we got 368 grams in, which is great. All right, so we've stopped the main donor tank. Now we still have gas in, in the line here from here to here. So the next thing we want, that we need to do is we need to contain the CO2 that we have in our cylinder. And we're gonna do that by loosening Lefty Lucy on the top knob. That's gonna allow no more CO2 to come out of the cylinder, but we still have a little bit left in the line here in the hose. So that's what we need to vent with the exhaust valve and then we can remove the cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and vent that now. And there's a decent amount coming out. It's very white, it's very, um, it was definitely very cold, so. We're gonna vent that, that's okay. It shouldn't be, if it continues, close it. Uh, but if it goes on for you know, 10, 15 seconds, that's pretty normal. That amount is gonna be safe to be around. Um, you know, Just again, have some ventilation open, but unless you're in a very confined space, even that, it, you would be fine with, with that level. Okay, so we've now vented that, and now we can safely remove the cylinder and complete the process. Exhaust is done. Now we can unscrew the base here. And now we have no pressure here. So when we remove this, there's no popping, there's no risking breaking the thing. If you don't do that exhaust vent, you will potentially rupture some of these, uh, the gaskets in here. We've successfully refilled this cylinder. Let's just check the weight on our scale here real quick. Awesome, so we're at 1110 grams. You know, this started at 740 something, so. That's a very successful refill, matches the numbers that we saw as we zeroed the scale. And that's why it's nice to zero the scale, just because you do want to try to get at least 300 in. 400 is really tricky with these ones. So that's the process for finishing uh, refilling. And from this point, you can you know make sure everything's off here and go ahead and remove your adapter and put your CO2 larger tank uh, back in a secure uh, area. Nice job. You are now an expert on refilling SodaStream Quick Connect cylinders. You'll be refilling these for a dollar now, maybe $2 max, so much cheaper than $15 per bottle. Stick it to SodaStream a little bit, do your own refills. Don't pay $15 a refill for these, do it at home. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below, or if you have any tips or something I missed, please let me know so I can improve for future videos. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and stay bubbly.